at the Garden of Life at Galago Court. We've been on this property since June uh, developing, so this is our first season here. We have uh, at least 65 garden beds growing uh, for the residents here on site. Uh, a few other beds that are located throughout as a learning process for the kids. I like to see all the flowers and and I like to see all the watermelons. I like um, planting some things and feeding the worms and I like painting some, some things and watering the plants. Oh, you see them. They're all wiggly. Let me see. Let's go show Emily. It's really, really nice to see the growth of the kids. Um, every day they come and, and they're, they're so eager to paint and to build and they always want to do any job that you would give them. The garden has changed my life because I met new people, which is Blue and Emily, and they inspired me to do a lot in the garden and they inspire me to do photography. I like the garden because it's so cool. <laughs> this is something like, you know, we need in this neighborhood, you know? Most of them are like me, I'm an old guy too, you know what I mean? And we need something like that to be, you know, a little more relaxed. In there. Yeah, the new urban farmers are just really excited to have created such a strong tie here at the Housing Authority in Pawtucket. We really find, uh, have found ourselves here at home and being able to grow food and give a positive place for the kids in the community has been, uh, has been a, great, a great adventure and I can't wait for next season. Can I get him? Oh my God, he's so big. Can I get him? Oh, they're kind of sticky. <laughs> My summer vacation spending here was more fun than actually in my house watching TV or going in the playground. So that's why I'm happy that you and Blue came to Galago to build things and we have art days and stuff and it's just making me smile. Up. This was the only tent we had up. Uh, we had eight people in there the first night. It was cold. Uh, of course, we've been here over three months. Uh, homeless community gets very resourceful. I didn't think we'd be here that long. I got a little comfortable. You know, I got a bedroll. Uh, blankets came in. I got pillows. Uh, someone brought bookshelves, and uh, this is like my little office area. Uh, it's also got my cosmetics. I keep little snacks here. Uh, I got a radio that you can crank because weather's important. You got to make sure the weather. You got to know what the weather's going to be like. Because this is also like the meeting. It's, I do a lot of meetings in here. Like before, when we were doing a lot of action, a lot of advocacy, our best meetings were always in church parking lots, alleyways, in the streets. 
and now we do it in the tent. And I got my prayer blanket, uh, my clothes, uh, radio, I light candles to keep lights. I don't have batteries for the lantern. But uh, a lot of things happen in here. A lot of good things came out of this tent. A lot of good meetings, a lot of uh, positive things. You might think it's cozy, but it really is not. I'm still outside. It's still not uh, structured for our walls, you see. It's not the same. Uh, but my community get, will, will get there someday. Uh, we've got to keep the population down. We've got to get economic growth. We've got to get the stimulus going. It's just, it's crazy. It's crazy, but we'll keep on fighting. A young widow clings to her eight-month-old baby as she passes through the flag-lined streets of Taunton. It's the only part of her soldier husband she has left. Don't worry, honey. I'll take good care of our little baby girl. Army Sergeant Shane Duffy was not only a husband and father, but a son, brother, and friend. He was a man forged in the fires of honor, bravery, valor, and chivalry. And today he was laid to rest as an American hero. His service and sacrifice reminds us of how precious life is. I could not be prouder of him, nor could I ever have found a better man. Sergeant Duffy's last trip home here to Taunton was just two weeks before his unit came under enemy attack in Iraq. He was home for the Memorial Day holiday, never imagining that his next trip here would be met with tears of sadness. But Sergeant Duffy's wife, Jamie, pushed past the tears to share with a crowded church the man she loved. Ours is true love, and I will count myself, myself lucky to have the chance to have experienced these, these feelings, even if I only had a few years with Shane here. She also shared pieces of letters he wrote to her. You mean everything to me, and I can't wait till we're back together again and starting a nice life with lots of little regrets. I love you, honey, and admire you more than you know. Your strength helps me through every day here. To be able to enjoy the very freedom that we uh, currently enjoy throughout the summer, the picnicking and the ball fields and everything else, it's all a result of the sacrifice that he made. A sacrifice that earned Sergeant Shane Duffy a new title. You were already my hero, honey, but now you're everybody's. In Taunton, Erica Ritchie, ABC 6 News. They're getting down and dirty. Working hard, doing it all for free. I would definitely do it again. Reflecting the very fabric of our nation. The kids um, get together and they do service on homes um, with a Christian theme. These teens are part of a group of nearly 400 from up and down the East Coast and Canada doing service projects across Rhode Island this week. They're using their hands and their bodies and their minds and they're um, expressing what Jesus would do on a day-to-day -day basis right here um, in our local area. At this home in Coventry, these kids are building a handicap ramp. The homeowner is confined to a wheelchair as a result of cancer. Right now I feel like he has no independence at all. So this is enabling him to get out when we're not home and knowing that he's safe and able to just do something. It's that satisfying feeling of doing good that brought Kristen Valamont back for her fifth project. There's other things that could be doing, but this is what I want to do. Not only are these teens giving up a week of their summer vacation, but they're paying to do it. Each one forking over about $450 to take part in this work project. And that's not paying for a room with the Weston, I'll tell you. It's hotel-like accommodations with Davisville Middle School. Um, they're living on the classroom floors, um, boys on one wing, girls on another. Um, they're eating their cafeteria food, and they're actually um, taking showers in, their, in the locker rooms. God tells you to, like, share with others and help out others. By the time they all go home tomorrow, they will have helped out 55 Rhode Island families. In Coventry, Erica Ritchie, ABC6 News. At first glance, this looks like a forest. Nope, it's an overgrown front yard. With the economy, Julie, it, it's really um, getting bad out there and, and people are uh, pretty much abandoning their homes. Dozens of homes in foreclosure are starting to look like this. The banks or whoever is responsible are not cleaning up the properties. Cranston City Councilman Richard Santa Maria wants to clean these yards up for good. My ordinance will allow us to go in um, clean the property um, with our, our workers. Uh, we'll be able to slap an uninhabitable sign on the uh, front door and um, put a lien against the house. For now, neighbors have been pitching in, mowing lawns and pulling weeds, waiting for new owners to arrive. Hopefully, you know, 
good people buy the house and keep this neighborhood clean. Because of the credit crisis, there are hundreds of homes in Cranston with backyards just like this. The city's hoping this new ordinance will give these places a fresh start. In Cranston, Julie Roditsky, ABC 6 News. You've heard of the iPod and the iPhone. Now meet the iPadre. Well, that's what they say. <laughs> Father Jay Finelli is pastor at Holy Ghost in Tiverton, but he doesn't need an altar or even a church to preach to his followers. All he needs is a computer. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the iPadre Catholic Podcast. For two years, Father Finelli has broadcast a weekly podcast to listeners around the world. My theme is all things Catholic and then some. His shows include interviews, stories, and explanations of faith. On this day, he was talking about the Pope. Last Sunday, Pope Benedict XVI did some baptisms and celebrated Mass in the Sistine Chapel. It was reported that he celebrated Mass with his back toward the people. In today's show, we'll talk about that and more. This tech-savvy priest edits everything himself, dropping in music and, and sound effects. He says podcasting is a calling within a calling. So Jesus said, go forth and spread the good news. So any way we can do that, I think we feel compelled. I download it. Um, I usually listen to it on Monday mornings. Roger Dufour listens every week while he's at work. He's such a great homilist. It's a good way of being able to find out and learn about the faith. Father Fernelli hopes his podcast will get a new generation to think about faith in a new way, as something that's alive and not just confined to a church. It's not just some dead, uh, dead faith for old women and, and uh, people who sit in the morning and just pray their rosies, but it's, it's young people, and really the majority of people that listen are in, in their 20s and 30s. You can download the podcast from Father Finelli's website, ipadre.net. We've got a link to that website on our website, abc6.com. In the newsroom, Tom Lankford, ABC6 News. Community VNA is governed by an all-volunteer board of directors. Men and women from the local area towns who choose to donate their time because they believe in our mission of caring for all in need. Thanks to them, we remain true to our roots. Kathleen Trier has served as executive director and CEO for the past 20 years. Our board over the 100 years revisited the mission, reaffirmed the mission, and in fact that is the mission that we live by today to provide needed medical services regardless of a patient's ability to pay for those services. Jerry Lavoie, a banker by profession, serves as president of the all-volunteer board. You know, this agency's been here for a hundred years and it really is a community treasure. Two words come to mind, passion, compassion. Recognized each year for its consistently high level of care, the staff of Community VNA is proud to be known as the very finest. We're proud and honored by the fact that people invite us into their homes at what frequently is a difficult time for them. It's a responsibility and a trust that we take very seriously. And I am so pleased to receive letters of gratitude from clients. I receive the thanks and it's really the staff who are and the volunteers who are really making the difference in people's lives. 